But being led by the Spirit lines up with the truth of God's Word and living independent, walking in dependence on the Holy Spirit. But how are you led by the Spirit? So you have some folks who come along and they say, well, you just have to get inside. You have to, you have to think about it and you have to feel the Holy Spirit. Well, how objective is that? How do you know it's the Spirit? How do you know it's not just liver quiver? How do you know you just didn't have you know, too, too, too many jalapenos on your, on your burrito at lunch? How do you know it's the Holy Spirit and not just your emotions? Well, you don't. There has to be some sort of objective criteria. Now remember, when Jesus prayed to the Father, he said, sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. Now what is God's word? It is the objective revelation of God. Let's plug that into the concept of walking and leading. If I'm being led somewhere, there's somebody in front of me who is giving me a clear path to follow. I don't have to guess. I don't have to wonder, well, does he want me to go this way or that way? If I'm being led by somebody, if they're doing their job, then they're laying out a clear path. You, you know what I'm talking about. You've gotten on the freeway before. Some, you've got to follow somebody to a restaurant or to somebody's house, and they don't know how to lead at all. And you get behind them, and 15 seconds later, they've allowed six cars to get in front of you, and they've made a right turn, and you're in the left-hand lane, and you have no clue where to go now. Then there are other people who know how to lead, and they make sure that if you, some car gets between you and them, that they slow down so that other car gets frustrated and goes around them. They turn on their uh, direction signal a uh, quarter of a mile before they make the turn to make sure you understand that you have to be in that lane and make a turn. They lead you. There is clear, uh, clear information, objective information on where you're supposed to go. Now, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reveals His Word to us. It's been inscripturated through the prophets and the apostles so that the path the Holy Spirit is leading us down is not some subjective path related to our feelings, but it is the clear trail established in the Scriptures, the prohibitions and imperatives of the Word of God. So if you are led by the Spirit, and you are because He's laid the path down in front of you, you're not under the law. And then we go through several verses that contrast the flesh and the Spirit and their ultimate production. And in the conclusion, in verse 25, Paul says, But if, again it's a first class condition, if and it's true, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. So in the previous verse, he said, if we're uh, led by the Spirit, we're not under the law. If, and as a believer, we are led, first class condition, if, and it's true. You are led by the Spirit. We're all led by the Spirit. And here it says, if we live by the Spirit. What does that describe? It describes regeneration, if we live by the Spirit. Yes, that's true for every one of us. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you were regenerated by God the Holy Spirit at the instant of faith alone in Christ alone. So if you were lived by the Spirit, that is, if you are a believer, he then says, let us walk by the Spirit, or we all should or must live by the Spirit. It's a third person imperative. We don't have that in English. So I, I try to translate a little stronger. We must also walk by the Spirit. And here there's a different word for walking. It's not peripateo, which em emphasizes that step-by-step -step process of dependence. It's the Greek verb stoikeo. And stoikeo was a military term. And it means to stand in order to advance in rows or in ranks. But in the New Testament, it's used figuratively to mean to walk in an orderly manner according to some external rule or direction. Now, what's that external rule or direction? It's the Word of God. It is the clear, objective guidance given from the Word of God. So if we live by the Spirit, we walk by the Spirit, and that word for walking by the Spirit here emphasizes following an exter external guideline that is objective, knowable, and understandable. That is the rule by which we live, following the prohibitions and the positive 
uh, imperatives and mandates of the Word of God. So this is the first skill that we have to develop, and that is to follow the leading of the Spirit through the Word of God. Now, I'm going to briefly tie this together because these passages, or at least this passage, is familiar to most of you. Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled by means of the Holy Spirit. And that is a primary mandate related to the Christian life. But if you look at the verses that follow, in verses 19 and following, we learn of these, these results of the filling of the Spirit, or literally to be filled by means of the Spirit. Verse 19 says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Verse 20 focuses on giving thanks. Verse 21, submitting to one another. Uh, Verse uh, 22 focuses on wives submitting to your husbands. Uh, Verse uh, 25, husbands loving your wives. And then into chapter 6, children obeying your parents and fathers raising up children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That flows from fulfillment fulfilling the mandate of Ephesians 5, 18. So you have a clear command to be filled by means of the Spirit. Now the thrust of the Greek there is to be filled by means of the Spirit. The Spirit is the means of filling, not the content of the filling. It's not what's filled up with. If I had a cup up here and and I said fill that with coffee, I would be talking about the content of what you're going to put into the cup. That's not what this grammar refers to. It's not talking about filling you up with more of the Spirit. You've got all the Spirit you're going to get at the instant of salvation. But you're now being filled up with something by means of the Spirit. So what are you being filled up with? Well, then we have to go to a parallel passage in Colossians 3. So you just skip over Ephesians. You have Ephesians, then Philippians, uh, then Colossians. In Colossians 3... Verse 16, we have another command. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's the command. Not be filled with the Spirit, but let the word of Christ dwell in you. What is the result? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Didn't we just read that that's a result of being filled by the Spirit? Yeah, we did. Then it goes on to say that And verse 17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks. Wasn't that a result of the filling of the Spirit? Yes. Then in verse 18, Colossians 3, 18, wives submit to your husbands. Verse 19, husbands love your wives. Verse 20, children obey your parents. Verse 21, fathers don't provoke your children to wrath. In other words, you have this series of of results given in verses 16b down through 25, that flow from letting the Word of Christ dwell in you. They're the same results that you have in, Col- in, in Galatia, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 5, 19 and following. So if the filling by the Spirit produces this set of results, and letting the Word of Christ dwell in you produces the same set of results, then being filled by means of the Spirit... And letting the word of Christ dwell in you both produce the same thing. That means those two things must be related to one another. They're two sides of the same coin. You can't let the word of Christ dwell in you apart from the filling of the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit doesn't work independently of letting the word of God dwell in you. The Spirit of God and the Word of God work together to produce growth in your life. It's not one or the other, but they are the two that come together. It is the Spirit that produces the growth in your life, but ultimately it's your volition that determines whether you're rightly related to the Holy Spirit or not. So that when you're rightly related to the Holy Spirit, you are walking by means of the Holy Spirit. As you walk by the Spirit, You will be learning the Word of God. He will be filling your soul with the Word of God. And He will then be using the Word of God in and through your application to produce spiritual growth and spiritual advance. So what's the key? 